Storm sixth and a game out of the five, and Fitzroy seventh, one and a half games out, could ill afford to lose further ground. Fitzroy would still have been smarting at the upset defeat by St Kilda two weeks ago, and Geelong were going into the game with last week's memorable trouncing of North fresh in their minds. The match was a magnificent spectacle all day, with a wealth of goals. We joined Tim Lane and Ian Cleland 18 minutes into the first quarter. O'Neill brought towards the half-back line uh, as a result of the penalty. Quinlan up. Hasn't really been in the game so far. Now a chance for Bernie. Here he goes. That is mercurial best. Can line them up. Unselfish play to Carlson. Put him under the hammer. High tackle. Oh, and that hurt. There's been some very rugged tackling so far. And Lee Carlson reeling from that knock. Whether he can take it. 50 metres out. That's a magnificent kick. Carlson. 19 minutes into the first quarter. 4-2 Geelong, 3-4 Fitzroy. What a game we're going to have here. And there's a chance kicked off the ground beautifully by Quinlan down towards the forward line. But easily marked by Malarkey. It's given across to Bruce Nankervis. A long hand pass goes out to Murray Whitcomb. Whitcomb drives it up towards the centre wing position. Should find Zane Taylor. And he does. Neville Taylor is his opponent. He plays on, gives a hand pass across to Whitcomb who followed up. And that's good play. Kicks it up to centre half forward. Over the head of the pack. Another thump away by a Fitzroy defence. And there's plenty of them there. Kicked off the ground by Terry O'Neill. It's back here to the centre wing. Fitzroy into attack. And there's a chance for Receiving well from Conlon. Great play, the Lions. Long, direct. Ruse and Malarkey. Malarkey too good. Wilson now. Beautifully to Carlson. Oh, that was magnificent. Carlson second, and the Lions hit the front. 21 minutes gone in the first quarter, and Fitzroy in front, 4-4 four, four to 4-2. Four, Plenty of knocking up there, charging through as ever caught with a ball. No decision, play on. Carlson again doing particularly well. Gives a hand pass across here to Parrish. A snap for goal, it looks good! Another goal to Fitzroy, what a game! Twenty-two minutes gone, and Mossop trying to lift the catch, but oh, beautifully sharked away. That's great play. Ruse is there. Off hands are behind. Clayton it was. Five, five to five two as Malarkey kicks it in. Fitzroy are in front. 23 minutes gone this first quarter. The mark has been taken out there for Geelong by Boss. He kicks it back to the centre of the ground. Peak is there. Everett got the ball out towards Quinlan. He will sink it down towards that forward pocket. Which way will it bounce? Back for Ruse, but Malarkey is there to thump the ball away. A chance for Gotch. He'll have to pick it up first. Go a snap. Looks good. What a goal from Gotch. Twenty-three minutes gone, and an inspired Fitzroy at the moment. Francis puts them into attack again. McMahon! How did he do it? Forty metres out, directly in front. Hasn't been in the action, it's his first kick. Kick out will be taken by Taylor for Fitzroy. Decides to go on the outer side of the ground. He's looking for Rendell. Mossop was there battling with him and it'll be picked up by Yates. Took a long time to kick that ball and it was pretty high, but Taylor was there to grab it. Good mark. Took it on his chest. 
No leads coming. He's kicked it high in the air. Blake from the back. Knocked away. Good play by Chris Smith. A chance for Bright. Bright's got it. A right foot snap. And a goal! Great snap by Bright. And Geelong sneaking back into the match. 22 points down. Floyd. Whitcomb. Laurie tried the backhander. Plate, well played. Jeffries, keeps shepherding out nicely. Nan Curtis to Whitcomb. Parrish late on the scene. Leads, but uh, decides to ignore them. Taking too long. Very indecisive. Having a shot. Good kick. Running it through. Mighty goal by Murray Whitcomb. 22 minutes gone in their second quarter. Fitzroy at 12, 6 to Geelong, 9-8. And they're coming into attack again. Yates is the player to kick it up there. Turner again. Oh, he's doing well. He's keeping Geelong right in this game. His left foot pass goes out to Blake. Will he hold it? No, it's over to head the pack. And there are plenty of Fitzroy players. One of them fumbled. He's caught with it. Oh, it took a long time. Stretcher now has got the big chance. Goes for goal. And he's missed a bad one. That's the one Geelong wanted to get back into the game. And Stretcher Neal should have got that goal. He had plenty of opportunity, plenty of time. Takes to DeLong to 9-9. Fitzroy, 12-6. 22 and a half minutes gone. And DeLong with Fitzroy under pressure now. <laughs> Jeffries following Quinlan up the ground. Lead from Neil. Oh, Daisy cover. Gee, this fellow must have had a bundle of kicks. Well, it doesn't, but uh, at the same time, hasn't always used them. He missed badly a moment ago. He's made right up for it there with a magnificent goal. And Geelong, to their credit, are really storming back into this match. They're only nine points down. 23 and a half minutes gone in this second quarter. Nine points of difference. Geelong coming back. They trailed by six goals at one stage. Peak is there again. Drives it down and Neil again. And by G, Neil and Turner brought Geelong right into this. Terry Bright will mark it. Well within kicking distance. The two baldies. And I can say that without any embarrassment to them or me. Bright and Murnay. And this is 13th kick for Terry Bright. Kicked a very good snap goal a moment ago. He's got another one. Three points of difference. In. And Big Blake got a big knock from the centre of the ground. It comes right down towards half four where Floyd and Taylor do battle. Picked up by Neil. He's been playing great football. Neil picks up, swings it goalward. And I think it's true. It's a goal kicked by Neil. His second goal. He's played a great game of football for Geelong. So very early in the final quarter, less than 30 seconds, Geelong get a goal and keep their chances alive. Fitzroy 19-10, 124. Geelong 16-13, 109. And there's only 13 points to difference. Yes, I can't help but agree with you, Jack Robert Neil. Right Sorry. Throughout. Sorry, Bob, 15 points of difference. I thought that's what you said. <laughs> no, I said 13. So, uh, Robert Neil has been a fine player. Centre bounce. Can Blake get the ball away once again in the manner that he just did? First time they've used him in the ruck, isn't it? No, he's been in and out a few times, Jack. Once again, Blake does get the big tap. It goes straight to Parrish. Parrish bundled out of the way, though. It comes to Turner. Turner screws the ball over the shoulder. Down towards Tui and Coleman. Coleman two up to the high. Mr. Sitter, though. Taken by Tui. Tui has snapped towards goal. He's offline, out of bounds on the full. And so the free kick will go to Glenn Coleman. 
who had the chance to take that mark just before, so this time he gets the opportunity to make amends and put the ball well out, well out of the danger zone. Looking for Rendell, he'll go out there, opposed to Blake. The two big fellows do battle. Blake punches the ball away toward Floyd, but it's over the boundary line. We'll see a throw-in taking place in Geelong forward pocket position. Fitzroy in the first quarter kicked nine goals five to Geelong's five goals four. They kick 5-2 in the second quarter to Geelong, seven goals, six, only nine points at half time. And now it's 20, well, it's only 15 points the difference now. The kick taken by Parrish, quick hand pass from Floyd, looking for and finding Yates. Yates coming up towards the half forward line, drives it up to Tui and Coleman, off the hands of the pack, it hits the point for the goal post, and it's one point. And I suppose you could put it down to Yates, Jack? Oh, that you could, Bob. It uh, uh, was his kick that got through. There it is, 24 points the difference, uh, 15, I'll get that right in a minute, 14 points the difference. Coleman, full back. O'Neill got hurt in the third quarter, that's the reason Coleman's playing in the full back position. Kick straight to Jeffries of Geelong, so Paul Jeffries actually placed at centre half back at the moment. He's up at centre half forward where he followed Bernie Quinlan. Lovely torpedo punt kick right up towards the goal square. Smith coming across for Fitzroy. Can't quite reach it to Mark. So one point there. Kicked by the big fellow in Paul Jeffries. For watching this final quarter replay on Seven's Big League, you'd think that Geelong were with the team in front because Fitzroy haven't yet been over the uh, centre line. Grant Lurie at fullback kicking in on this occasion, putting it out wide. Hinchin's the target. He's in there, but no, he can't take it. Whitcomb can't get hold of it. Taken by Rendell. Funny little kick coming around to Ward Monane, opposed to Nan Curvis. They both overrun it. Peak goes back for Geelong to pick up. He can get a hand past to Neil, but he goes to uh, put the ball in toward the centre. Taylor takes up a position to take the mark. Couldn't do so. Picked up by Drum. Drum getting the boot to it now. Shoots it in toward the forward pocket. Could have been a mark. It's been well picked up by Laurie. He hand passes into Parrish. Parrish coming down. Can see Everett on centre wing. He may, he may go that way. Yes, he's toward Everett. Can't get it. It's over the boundary line for mine on the full. And the umpire said it was... I thought it was Bruce Nankervis that it was after the full two, but the umpire said no. So out of it all, we find a throw-in to take place. It'll be Wendell and Blake. Wendell gets a tap down, missed by Gotch. Rare that you see young Gotch make a mistake. Peak's kick was smothered, but it goes straight to Neil. Neil, just as he was about to kick it, was slung and eventually hooked the ball across. Punched away by Taylor of Fitzroy. Thornton comes through, but it's beaten for the tap there by Peak. Not Peak, I should say Yates. It's eventually tapped by Bright towards Yates. Yates was held, but he slips now, just at the vital moment. Can't get the ball clear. He's held, but does tap it out wide towards Floyd. Floyd steadies, drives it towards centre half forward. Nobody home for Geelong, and Hinchin takes the mark. Wanting to play on in a hurry, he gets straight around Drum, straightens up and drives the ball in towards the centre of the ground. Over the head there of Conlon, it's Quinlan and Jeffries. Jeffries taps the ball wide, looking for it and finding Featherby. Featherby from the half-back flank goes for the short pass. A well-placed kick find, finds Floyd. Floyd on centre wing, out of side, looking in towards centre half forward. He could see the lead by Mossop. He's opposed to Smith. Turner's there also. Laurie over the top, didn't take it. Turner a chance. He breaks away from the opposition, gets past his own man. He's in trouble. Got a small kick. It comes in toward Whitcomb and Hinchin. Whitcomb into the back of Hinchin slightly, and Whitcomb will take the mark. He'll take the shot for goal also. He's kicked one goal. He's out about 55 metres. So Whitcomb backing himself here. It's Fitzroy, 124. Only 13 points in front of Geelong. Whitcomb trying to change the scoreboard, putting the ball up high. It's not on target. It's in toward the forward pocket area. A chance for Parrish to pick up. Floyd doing the pursuing. He picks it up, gets it toward the boundary line. Could have been into the back of the opposition, but the umpire set a boundary throw and will back again in their forward pocket area. Moss up there to do the ruck work. Rendell comes on the scene now for Fitzroy. Moss up the front berth. Rendell got the tap. Comes down to Smith. He got out of trouble nicely. He's made a couple of mistakes today, but this time he got the ball up to Ward Clayton, who got into the back of the opposition, and he's put away, uh, paid a free kick to Featherby. Uh, Peter Featherby. Very quiet today. In fact, I think probably the quietest game I've seen him play for Geelong. Peter Featherby. Kick off the side of the boot. Turner in the front position. Grant Laurie over the back. Lending support is Hinchin. Done well since he come on. Played extremely well. Puts it off the side of the boot. Featherby again leads and leading in the race for the ball. Three kicks in a matter of moments. Another short pass up towards Drum. A well-placed kick. A nice mark from Damien Drum. He's out on centre wing, favouring the half-forward flank slightly, looking in toward the full forwards. Only balks the opposition. Now balks another one. He takes a bounce. He's getting closer to goal. Puts the ball up high for Mossop. Mossop up at the back of Rendell. Couldn't take the mark. Rendell gets a hand pass. Thought of a hand pass. A bit late getting it working. Oops, in trouble down there. The tackle might, uh, by Bright might have been a shade high, but the ball comes out to Carlson. It's out there with Gotch. He gets into trouble. Tried to get it back to Carlson. Got caught in possession. Had it too long. 
And we find the free kick going wide on the half forward flank to Yates. In towards centre half forward. Moss up up high. No mark taken. Swooping on the ball is Turner showing good speed. He comes right up towards the centre of the ground though. He'll go for the short pass. Looking for Whitcomb. Couldn't handle the ball cleanly. Coming through was Hinchin. Couldn't gain possession the first time. Went Hinchin and Whitcomb. Both players fighting for possession. Hit Winch Whitcomb there first. He's tackled. Still tackled. And so a good play piece of play by Hinchin will relieve the pressure for Fitzroy as he'll take the free kick across the half back line. Should go for the long kick from this position. If he can get the ball in a hurry, little gotchas all on his own in the centre. But uh, Whitcomb not giving the ball back, naturally so. <laughs> You wouldn't expect him to, and so now we find that Hinchin will go for the long kick. He'll be looking for Quinlan, but the kick won't carry that far. Manane up, but it's tapped down to Mangels. The ball comes up back toward Hinchin over his head. It should bounce. Oh, it's bounced fairly well for Hinchin. Should have taken that ball. Now it's Turner picking up for Geelong on the left foot, swinging them back into attack at centre half forward. Bright's there. The ball not with him yet. There's a chance now for Drum with the ball in front of him. He loses his footing. He's still in there battling. He gets it out of the pack. Who might look for Whitcomb. He's in trouble. He got a hand pass out to Whitcomb. Whitcomb straightens up. Shoots for goal. Point blank range. And it's a goal. Whitcomb kicks his second goal. And the game tightens up at the Junction Oval. Fitzroy on 19-10, 124. Geelong 17-15, 117. Up to date, it's been first one side, then the other that has got taken the game away. Blake again gets a tap. Lowry coming through, through in beautiful fashion. The hand pass from Lowry, taken back after giving it to Parrish. The kick up forward, punched away by Malaki, but I think he may have given away a free kick to Paul Ruse. Ruse, who has kicked three goals, all in the first term. A long way out from goal, it's about 45, maybe 50 metres, a fairly acute angle. But nonetheless, one that's kickable from out there. It's kickable to a full forward, Bob. So oh. The distance is there. Hits a post. That's about the fourth post that we've had for the day, I think. If my memory serves me correctly. From the full back position, Reed will bring the ball back into play. Geelong uh, still hanging on, only eight points between the teams. Fitzroy in front. Oh, not a good kick. Mickey Conlon can't get to it, Everett can't either. Peek got there first. Hand pass comes back over the head of Floyd to Nan Curvis. He puts the ball up toward the centre of the ground and a difficult mark taken by Parrish. I think the sun may have been in his eyes there. So he did well to take that mark. Going out wide, though, I don't know if that's the right way to go home, but Conlon takes the mark for Fitzroy on the half-forward flank. Trying to do a bit too much again. He's looking for a hand pass downfield to Wilson. Wilson, 50 metres out, just about where the shot was taken by Ruse before, and it might be a goal. Yes, it's a goal to Wilson, a great goal. Wilson kicks his fifth goal. And Fitzroy get that six more points in front of Geelong. 20 goals, 11, 131. And Geelong on 17, 15, 117. That's exactly what I was saying before, Jack. It's first it's one side who looks to be going on with the game. Then the other side comes back. And it's been a most enjoyable game right throughout. Been a great game of football. Appreciated by the crowd of around about 22,000 people. Matt Wendell, Rod Blake. Blake on top in this quarter, but Wendell actually got the tap that time. Featherby a short kick out towards the half-forward line. Taylor of Fitzroy leads in the race of the ball, gets a bad bounce. He's well backed up, though, by Hinchin. Hinchin puts the short kick over the top. Hopefully for Fitzroy, it won't make the boundary line. It just does, and it's out of bounds on the foot. Whitcomb will take the free kick for Geelong. He'll be looking for Turner or somewhere in there. Yes, Turner is in there, but he can't quite take that mark. Comes a big Rendell. Well tackled and pushed in the back, I would think. There's by Neil. Couldn't do much about that, could he? Big Rendell across the half-back line. He didn't answer my question. I'm sorry, Jack. I said he couldn't do much about that. Not really. That was the way the free kick had to be played. As Rendell looks a very tired player at the moment. Quinlan almost took the mark. Everett first on the scene, overruns it. Hinchin again first of the ball and comes away. Has plenty of time to steady. Will go for the long kick up forward, looking for David McMahon. Over the top of those players. McMahon recovers, comes through. Can't get there before Blake. Blake carries the ball over them. No, he taps it back from the boundary line. It's Mangles who runs into all sorts of trouble. The umpire Peter Howe coming in to indicate that he'll bounce the ball almost in the forward pocket for Fitzroy. We've been playing 11 and a half minutes of the qu uh, final quarter here. The junction oval, Fitzroy in attack in their forward pocket area. Blake hooked the ball in, well done, got the boot to it. Gets it up toward Peak. Everett's there to punch the ball away. Did that with some success. The ball down with Whitcomb, Hinchin there again, doing a great job in there. Thought he might have picked up a free kick, but the umpire said a bounce will take place at the half forward position for Fitzroy. Fitzroy 131 to Geelong 117. 
14 points the difference. Umpire James about to put it down at centre half forward for Fitzroy. Blake hooked it out to the back of the pack. Can't be taken yet by Drum. Trying to pick it up. Still trying to get it out. A pack forming up and umpire James will bounce again. Well, the bounce, not far from the point of the square. It's about 60 metres away from the Fitzroy goal. It's 131 to 117, 12 minutes into the final turn. Manane gathers it in well, runs back into trouble, tackled, it's almost gets a push in the back, I'd say. Bit and lucky. A little lucky, yes, but it's, uh, umpires have been very consistent with the tackles as far as penalising in that respect, Jack. Well, Manane looking for a placement kick. He put it up high, hoping for a high mark from a Fitzroy teammate. McMahon was in there, couldn't take the mark, got missed it on the way through. It's been forced up toward the half-forward zone. Bright's in there at half-back for Geelong with the ball in front of him. He's playing it quite well. Taken away from him by Drum, who was well tackled and holding the ball decision. Drum making a bad mistake there to in, uh, get him across in front of his teammate uh, in Terry Bright. Drum should have allowed Bright to come past and then get in behind him and ship it. Well, Bright was heading toward goal. Drum would have been going back the wrong way. It's with McMahon. A shocking kick by McMahon. And straight to Brian Peake. So, Peake of Geelong. On half back, 15 metre penalty. Peak running around, and uh, then the nine still had to, still short of the mark. Had to make Peak stop and go back and take a kick. A nice kick from Peak towards half back. Punched away by Clayton. First on the scene is Grant Laurie. Laurie swings back onto the left foot. Oh, straight out of bounds for mine. No need to say a word about that one. The crowd told the story. And straight up in the air and over the boundary on the foot. Well, Floyd will take the free kick player on the mark will have to come back quite a few metres. Umpire Peter Howe. Oh, that's not fair. Floyd plays on. A nice kick from Floyd. Must have said, but the first on the scene is Rendell. to take a lovely mark in defence. So you're back to that, Bob. While the umpire's showing the man on the mark, he shouldn't allow the opposition to play on. You I think? agree completely, Jack. And Howe, back to Taylor now from Rendell. Oh, not a good kick. He went for short pass. Bright's there for Geelong. The left foot shots toward goal. It's going to be very close indeed. Oh, just missed. Only one point. That was bad football by Taylor. You should, you should certainly say that Taylor would breathe again to see only one point come out of that. I think he would. So would Robert Walls. I'm sure the message will go out to him anyhow. Grant Laurie from the full-back position in two minds as to where to place the ball. Kicks high. Quinlan will fly in the pack. Oh, way under the ball. Taken by Peak. Peak kicks up toward the full forward position. No mark up there. Smith's in there under the ball. Picked up, up by Coleman. He was ridden down by... Uh, ridden in the back. Trip, the umpire said. The free kick will go to Coleman against Turner. I'll just tempt the sun, is what Coleman should be doing there. You've got the free kick. Yes, you don't want to get it reversed. Not there. It's only about 20 metres out from the goal. Coleman in two minds as to what to do. Not a good kick. Comes in toward Carlson, who sets himself. Can't take the mark. Been picked up. Well, Peak had a chance to pick up. Manane's on the scene now to try and take it from him. Peak seemed to have plenty of time. Comes out to Nair Curvis from Floyd. Comes back again. And Yates puts it forward for Geelong. Coleman by himself takes the mark. So Coleman will look at cross goals. No, he, he decides not to give it across to Parrish. Plays on now. Runs around his opponent in Mossop. Shows a good turn of speed and drives a lovely kick up towards the centre area. Manane up high from behind. Couldn't quite take the mark. Picked up by Featherby. A short kick. Bounces towards Yates. Yates can't handle the ball cleanly. He's held. We're not in possession of the ball, though. It was bad luck for Taylor because he did think that Yates had taken possession, but not so. Yates did miss the ball and so didn't have the ball when he was tackled. Yates kick straight across to the half-forward flank and boost Nan Curvis. Nan Curvis way up from the half-back line. I think he's come up with his opponent. Nan Curvis too far out to score, I would think. He's going to have a good try, though. He's put it up high. Rendell sets himself. The hands go up and the mark taken by Matt Rendell. Much improved player. Good player, this fellow. Out to Parrish. Parrish can give a hand pass on if he wishes. Oops, a lot of strong work being done there. Up toward Everett and Peak, no mark. Very close to the boundary line. Everett into the back of Peak. The ball over the boundary line. And the umpire set a boundary throw in. The reason for the screen, it's Conlon and Drum having a few words. Well, they are number 12 and number 43. Right in the foreground. But at the moment, it's Blake and Rendell that we're concerned with. Blake gets a tap. Free kick. Bright, Bright held, we're not in possession of the ball, we'll get the free kick, it's called on. on. They've all stopped, and Bright going to the ball now in the half-forward zone, good tackle by Thornton. No, he didn't penalise that, cut out by Bright uh, to, to Drum. 
drum. It's Laurie. It's back now to Parrish. Parrish thought of a hand pass. Now he lets one go. It's back to Thornton. Thornton going down toward the half forward flank, looking for Quinlan. Quinlan up high, punched away by Jeffries. Oops, stays in play with Mangles. He got bumped out by Monet, and that was good football. Wilson a chance. He's going to take a bit of beating here. Wilson goes goalward. Look at that for a goal. Great goal by Gary Wilson. That's his sixth goal. Fitzroy, 21 goals, 11, 137, Geelong, 17, 16, 118. Glenn James, and there's the board, 137, 118. 19 points, the, points, the margin held by Fitzroy. As Blake gets a tap, it goes straight to Neil. Neil, a hand pass across to Yates. Yates from half forward, going towards the goal. It's over the head, it might even be a goal! Great goal by Mark Yates. Brings the points there, the goal's back to now. 13 points between the subs. Well, it's a great game of football we're watching here at the James and Oval. Has been all day. I did tell you, I'll tell you again, that Fitzroy kicked nine goals five in the electrifying first quarter to five goals four in Geelong. In the second quarter, Fitzroy kicked five goals two to Geelong, seven goals six. It was only nine points in it at half time. At three quarter time, was 21 points the difference after Fitzroy kicked five three to Geelong's three three. And now on the scoreboard, 137 playing, 124, 13 points the difference. 18 and a half minutes have gone. The final quarter. Sevens big league brings you the action. A big punch from Blake. Right down to the half forward zone. It's Taylor getting there first for Fitzroy. The ball in front of him. Turner did the tackling. Now Manane and Taylor do battle. That's uh, Taylor's hand pass to get out of trouble. Was meant for Hinch and comes to Whitcomb. The kick will go over on the full and it will be Fitzroy's free kick to be taken on the half back Blake area on the member's side of the ground. So the free kick will be taken by Grant Laurie. Laurie, no, it's Taylor to take the kick. He'll be looking for Quinlan, but Quinlan's being well, no, he's going short to Manane. Manane, having the chance to play on straight away. But now elects to come back and steady play up for the moment. Runs around Floyd. Now from centre wing, goes oh. for the kick, it's a shot, but it bounces just inside the line. So you can say that he gained a fair amount of distance nonetheless. Well, that he did. I'm sure he wasn't meaning to put it there, but it's in Fitzroy's... Well, not quite down to the forward pocket position. Be out round about 65 metres from goal where the ball will land, I would think. Quinlan in front on this occasion. Got the tap over the back. Punched down by Brad Gotch, who followed through. Got into the back of the opposition on that occasion. But umpire Peter Howe said a bounce will take place in the same position as the boundary throw in landed. So about 60 to 65 metres out from Fitzroy's goal. Fitzroy leading by 13 points as a time clock is getting around toward the 20-minute mark of the final quarter. Blake and Quinlan. Blake got the tap down. Well sharp by Clayton, but he can't do anything with it. I'm just watching further down the ground, Jack, uh, Gary Wilson, the way he was reading the play and running to the space in anticipation that his uh, side was going to get the ball. Well, that they didn't. It's back to Peter Howe, the umpire, who's going to put the ball down and, as I said, about 60 to 65 metres out from goal. There's a chance here for Whitcomb. Hinchin does the tackling. Good hand pass there. Puts it out for Neil. Neil putting the ball up high. Turner's a chance. Coming in is Smith. It's Laurie and Turner. Turner can't get there. Laurie's ridden to the ground just about. Moss of court. The ball on the turf. Comes out toward Laurie. There's a quick hand pass out. Laurie gets a hand pass to Manane. Fitzroy can go now through Parrish. From Manane. Parrish takes a bounce. He'll come right down towards centre half four. He looks for Quinlan. A pie and a mark to Quinlan. A one-hander. Well, if anyone can win a game from 55 metres out, it's Bernie Quinlan. See if he proves me right. I said before he's been having trouble with Jeffries. Jeffries has been giving uh, quite a hard time down there. Quinlan. Drop punt kick. It's close. It's a goal. Quinlan kicks his first goal for the day and Fitzroy score improves again to 19 points in front of Geelong. Bernie Quinlan on screen after kicking that goal. The Fitzroy fans are happy, of course. The scoreboard being changed to show that Fitzroy, 22 goals, 11, 143. Geelong, 18, 16, 124. Well, it may have been Quinlan's first goal, Jack, but it could not have come at a more opportune moment. You're right there, Bob. Blake has dominated the ruck work in this quarter, but around the ground, Rendell's still a fine player. 
of bounce. Favours Wendell. Knocked away by Manone. Oh. A wild kick by Blake. Didn't that connect with the ball? Quinlan in trouble. Got the hand pass out. Manone comes out with the ball. Smothered by Blake. Back towards Quinlan again. The free kick goes against Quinlan. Jeffries comes out with the ball. Gives it across to Neil. Neil runs his full 15 metres and puts a left foot kick up towards the forward area. It'll be a free kick to Geelong's Tui because Coleman went right into the back. It was one of those accidental ones, I think, Jack, when the player uh, stood his ground, but nonetheless, it was definitely a free kick. Yeah, they're still playable, and Tui has kicked four goals for Geelong, and a chance to kick his fifth goal. 19 points to difference in favour of Fitzroy, as Tui comes in trying for goal number five. It's going to be close. It's a goal for mine. That was a free kick down there against Geelong. It's going to be taken by Rendell. That had gone through for a goal. And umpire Peter Howe has ruled no score and a free kick to Rendell. Rendell plays on now to the outer side. Looking for Manet and he can't take the mark. It's at the back of the pack. Yates not played either. He's called play on. Gives it to Neil. Neil's shot going goalward. Is it close this time? It's only through for one behind. So Neil not getting the, uh, the result he was after. 18 points of difference now in favour of Fitzroy and the time clock approaching the 23-minute mark. You're watching this final quarter from the Junction Oval on Seven's Big League, and I hope you're enjoying it as much as Bob and I have this afternoon. It's been a great game of football. Back into play. 143-125. Fitzroy holding the margin at the present moment. There's a nice kick from Laurie. Goes up towards half-back. Blake up too tall, and he takes a fine mark. Rod Blake from the half-forward line. Turner calling for the ball in the square. Blake going for the long kick. Turner from behind up high, but Grant Laurie in the front position. A timely mark for Fitzroy. Laurie. He'll probably go for the long kick from this position. I think he should. I don't think he likes Blake up there, though. Blake's a bit Can't take the mark. It's very close to the line. Picked up by Smith. Given back to Manane. Manane breaking away now. Wilson makes position to take the hand pass. And Wilson from the half-forward flank. In hot pursuit was Mangels, I think it was. He's found Quinlan. Bernie Quinlan at centre-half forward. Well short of where he kicked his previous goal. So uh, there's no doubt in my mind that a normal kick from Bernie Quinlan will easily make the distance. Only the accuracy is what will probably be required. That's exactly true, Bob. He'll make the distance. I've no worries about that. 18 points to margin as Bernie Quinlan comes towards goal. A lovely looking kick and the goal umpire says no, it's 24 points the margin with Fitzroy going to 23 goals 11, 149, Geelong 18, 17, 125. A lead of four goals, it's very rare that you put it away. Let's remember, we saw Essendon kick four goals in time on up in Sydney against the, uh, South Melbourne. And I don't think Geelong can do it the way they're playing at the present moment because it's Fitzroy maintaining all of the enthusiasm as Clayton puts the ball forward. Another mark to Wilson. And Gary Wilson from, uh, well, about 30 metres out, the opportunity of kicking goal number seven. And uh, that's leadership at its best. The best way of leading is by example, and that's exactly what Gary Wilson has done today. Well, he's much closer to goal than he was when he kicked his sixth goal, so... Once again, we'll say he'll make the distance. He often uses a torpedo punt kick. I think he's close enough for a drop punt. That he is. It's another goal to Wilson right through the centre of another one. Fitzroy move on to 24 goals, 11. 155 points. Geelong, 18, 17, 125 points. There it is in front of you. And it's 30 points to difference in favour of Fitzroy. Very happy leader of the Fitzroy side, Gary Wilson, and an inspirational player at that. High scoring game, Bob, 42 goals. Yes, but very entertaining, isn't it? Great game of football. 30 points, the margin held by Fitzroy as Wendell grabs the ball out of the centre. Dummies around Featherby, straightens up and puts a long kick forward over the centre half forward position. No mark taken as McMahon punched it away, gave away a free kick as he was doing so, and the kick will go to Geelong's Mark Box. He's way back behind half back, so he's a long way to go yet. Out toward the wing position out of side. Carlson tried to get it away from the opposite. Could have been a mark to Yates, I thought. The umpire has said there will uh, be a kick to Yates, whether he paid the mark or the free kick. He paid the mark. Yates. Into half forward, Featherby in front. No mark. Taylor's there, can't get it. Yes, he's there now. He's got the ball in front of him. Can he keep it coming? Yes, he's forced it out in front of him. Good football. Hinchin did the shepherding on that occasion for Coleman, who was tackled, and threw the ball away. <laughs>
There uh, wasn't anything else that he could possibly do. Well, his other arm was pinned. He couldn't touch the ball. But he made the mistake there of running away from the mark, giving Tui an extra 15 metres. Tui's kick right up towards the square, punched away by Mossop, and then tapped through by Wendell. We've been playing 27 minutes into the final term. Fitzroy holding his way, 155 to 126. Grant Laurie will be coming out to the big fellow Rendell. No, he's going to the outer side. You can see Parrish leading out there. Parrish first to the ball. Can he take the mark? It's at the back. Can't take it. Taylor got himself out of trouble. Bright picks up the trunk. Loses possession. Manane tapped it out. Got out of trouble or right up toward Quinlan in front of Jeffries. No mark to either player. Quick hand pass from Malarkey across to Yates. Yates goes for the short pass, finds the big fellow in Blake. Blake wanting to get the ball moving quickly, gives it back to Yates. Yates comes up almost towards centre half forward. Got the hand pass out to Whitcomb, a chance of a goal coming up as Whitcomb goes forward, puts it right through the centre, and Murray Whitcomb brings up his third goal. Nice piece of work by Yates, Bob. Yes, full uh, marks to Yates there, Jack, as uh, Whitcomb takes the Geelong score up to um, 20 goal, 19 goals, 18, 132, with Fitzroy 24, 11, 155. Ball about to come back to the centre for the bounce. We've been playing 28 and a half minutes of the final quarter here. Fitzroy, as Bobby told you, on 155 and Geelong 132. Umpire James about to put it down. Big Blake opposing Rendell, who's done a great job. Rendell rucked all day. Blake got that tap out. Thornton was there. Parrish got caught, got a hand pass away, but the tackle was too high against Parrish, said umpire James. But he will take the free kick from within the square. Going out wide. No, he thought about going wide. He goes for a long hand pass to Rendell. Rendell going short to the flank, looking for little Gotch, and he's found it. Fitzroy moving the ball around, almost uh, keeping in a possession game. Another short pass, punched away. It'll be a free kick to Adam McMahon as Boston coming in to punch the ball away. Put the foot right in the middle of McMahon's back, and so the free kick goes to David McMahon. And from this position, Jack, McMahon has the opportunity of kicking goal number six because uh, when he gets onto those spirally torpedo punt kicks, he's liable to kick at any distance. Well, it'll have to be a good kick. He's out about 65 metres, I reckon. It was a good kick, wasn't it? A ripper, Bob. You're a good judge. Hello, <laughs> so that's for you. David McMahon kicking his fifth goal. Fitzroy, 25-11, 161. Geelong, 19-18, 132. McMahon, sixth goal. And a great goal it was. And uh, if ever there was one that sealed the game, I feel sure that that has because the clock is ticking away to the 30-minute mark. So not too many minutes left in this final term. And uh, Fitzroy leading Geelong by 29 points. Umpire Glenn James about to start proceedings again. Rendell opposing Blake. Came to ground, taken by Floyd, smothered by Gotch. Hinchin can't get it moving. Floyd in there battling, got a hand pass back out. Another chance for uh, Drum to get it moving. Here's another one. Drum going goal at Oops. He's right into goals. 15 metres out was a free kick. Upfield. I think he just ran a little too far, Jack. I thought there must have been something happened back there. Taylor went for the short pass, put it out to Parrish. Parrish with the ball in front of him, out wide on the half-back flank. Manane went for a short lead there, but now Parrish backs himself, comes through the centre of the ground, going for the short pass into McMahon. McMahon had it and lost it, didn't hold the mark. It comes to turf. The umpire said a free kick will be paid to Geelong, and it will go to Featherby. So Peter Featherby from half-back flank. There's the siren. Fitzroy running out. Good winners. 25-11, 161. Geelong, 19-18, 132. Goals and McMahon, six for Geelong, two he got four goals, three each to Brighton Whitcomb, and the Lions once again proving that at home at the Junction Oval, they're very, very hard to toss. Uh, the mark's pretty well even, uh, the kick's in favour of Geelong, 186 to 169, but of course in the end, the Lions running out winners, as I said, by 29.